On this episode of Humble History, we will continue to cover the biography of Ethiopian Emperor Tedros II. Now, we are going to cover the history of Tedros's reign. Let's get into it right now. Tedros was the first monarch who began modernizing Ethiopia. When it came to government, he believed that the regional lords should have minimum powers and that the main source of power should be the central government. Tedros kept the governors that supported his new political structure and replaced the ones who disagreed with the loyalists of his own. Tedros also made laws to ban slavery in Ethiopia. For this reform, he leveraged the church for his source of wealth. In the past, the clergy were given tremendous land based on their position. Tedros repurposed most of the land to benefit the majority and create wealth for the state. However, this led to conflict with the clergy, who had great influence over the people. Additionally, he made it a priority to modernize the military. Since his power came from success in battle, it made sense for him to prioritize the armed forces. He set out three targets for transformation, organization, discipline, and armament. Tedros had two foreign forces that occupied most of his decision-making, the Egyptians and the British. The Egyptians had been encroaching on Ethiopia for decades and the threat of their attack stayed on Tedros's mind. This is what led him to the second foreign contact, the British. Although Tedros contacted several European powers asking for military aid, he focused primarily on the British to ask for engineers to build his artillery manufacturing plant. Although the British would send missionaries with some artisanal skills, they were not the equipped engineers that Tedros wanted. After several fruitless letters to the British, Tedros arrested the missionaries and forced them to produce military weapons for him. On this threat, Tedros decided to take his prisoners to his stronghold at Matala. However, before they left, he ordered them to make him a supremely powerful weapon. He provided thousands of labor and checked on their progress frequently. Within a few months, they had cast a giant mortar cannon which Tedros christened Sebastopol. This external challenge was only worsened by the growing animosity of the regional lords against Tedros. Many of the lords opposed Tedros' centralized government and many had suffered battles against him as he forced his new political system upon them. Rebellions began in Gojam, Welkait, Lasta, Shawa, and Wello after Tedros had used increasingly violent methods to subdue his enemies Rumors had spread that the once just king was going mad. His final battle was against a British expedition of 32,000 troops that were sent to free the imprisoned Europeans. At this point, not only had he lost his supporters, but his enemies had just opened the gates for the British force to march straight to Magdala. After a grueling first day of combat, both camps seized fire for the day. On the following days, as his men were defeated, as his fortresses were being infiltrated, Tedros' fate seemed sealed. Tedros' soldiers barely pushed back the invaders on the first day. Their artillery was already depleted. Their only hope was the cannon Sebastopol. 500 men carried the massive cannon up the steep slope into position, but when the time came, the cannon misfired. The final British attack happened on April 13th, as the British invaded the fortresses. They found Tedros, once a deemed liberator, now seen as a tyrant, dead by his own hands. Tedros died isolated in his fortress. Although he had a tragic end, Tedros is revered in Ethiopia today for ending the era of princes. As the leader who began the modernization of the country, through his attempts to centralize the government, end slavery, and restructure the military, Tedros remains one of the most important figures in Ethiopian history.